Okay. Call the uh, planning committee, planning zone committee of the county commission to order. Uh, I'd like to have approval of the minutes first. Do we have the minutes out? Yes, sir. Everybody take a minute to look at them. Chairman, I'll take a motion. Move to approve. Got second. Motion to approve. Second. Got a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, do we have any public comment from anybody? Is there anything on the agenda tonight? Don't hear any public comments, so we'll move on. Uh, Tom, do you want to give a report before we get into the home occupation thing? Uh, I don't really have much to report. I know the Urban Growth Foundry is still being negotiated out, and I've not heard the final complexion of that. Is that what opened uh, up the growth plan? It's, it's yes. Lebanon, right? Yes. My understanding is Lebanon uh, has some issues with one of the areas that the county has laid out as a planned growth area for the county. Not not the whole growth area, but just a portion of it. And so that's being discussed. But uh, I know everybody's anxious to get the growth plan put together so we have something to work toward, but I understand. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, ideally we could get all four elected bodies to get it approved and, and move it on to the state of Tennessee and, and be done with it for at least three years. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. But running running into a time issue, according to yeah. the mayor, the email yeah. you and I got a few minutes ago. On the land use plan, I'll give you an update on that. I have spoken with our consultant. Um, we're looking at a at a uh, refire or restart date at the first of January, uh, based on their their schedule at this point. Um, they are they do owe me a uh, calendar uh, for getting that restarted. So we had discussed that with them and uh, trying to get it restarted. When, when will you know something can present a cow? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm subject to them getting it to me. And they're, and they're aware, and they told me, I, I met with them, I think, uh, October 6th, somewhere thereabouts, and uh, by, by teams. And at that time, that's what we laid out that they needed to get to me. And then I met with them last week at the MPO meeting and uh, they told me that they were, you know, that they uh, they were aware and they owed me that okay. calendar. So, okay. okay. Well, moving on then. Um, um, next, PAS. Before you, you might think about this. Um, the spent the Spencer Creek Spencer no yes Spencer Creek flood study. Um, the next public meeting with the Corps is scheduled for November 29th at 9 a.m. Generally in this room. They. They, they being the core, canceled the October one because they didn't feel that there was enough progress made to report on. And I think they were otherwise occupied the day of the meeting. You'll have something for the commission, next commission meeting? No, um, I mean, I just want to announce this for the commission. You can have no, it back and have about it. About no, I don't think I. Uh, okay. I don't think I'll. Ha I don't think I've got anything going before the county commission in, the, in November that I'm aware of. Okay. Okay. Moving on to home occupation. Has everybody had a chance? <laughs> Here, I'll pass it out. Okay. okay. Where Where did you get this? Where did this something? Well, here I got it. Where did the stupid come from? Well, th this is something I, that I've developed based in part on our ability to enforce um, what I'll call the difference between a home occupation and an out and out commercial business in a residential zone district um, coupled with some things that have been kind of from my perspective um, did you get one oh, yeah, uh, problem problem points for the Board of Zoning Appeals to try to interpret um, um, We've had long had a home occupation definition and, and the ability to have a, a home occupation um, in residential zone districts. Generally speaking, the idea was that if you could operate a business and use no more than 25% of the ground floor area of the buildings on the property and it continued to look, smell, act, and feel like a residence, um, then, then we were generally okay with that. Um, where we started having problems is things like outdoor storage 
outdoor equipment storage, outdoor uh, fleets of vehicles, um, Car. noise, things like that. So um, some things have arrived due to disagreement about what someone was doing at the Board of Zoning Appeals where someone was requesting to be interpreted as a home occupation uh, or in the alternative being allowed to be granted a use on appeal uh, for whatever specific commercial endeavor they were they were uh, involved in. Um, what you see before you, the black writing in large part, uh, and there may be one place where I accidentally have a typo and there, it's, it's some of it's red that, that is existing, but in large part the black writing is in place now. And it states that an incidental, uh, an incidental occupation customarily carried on in residence employing no more than one person not residing on the premises and utilizing no more than 25% of the usable floor area of all buildings, provided one, that no article or service be sold or offered for sale on the premise other than that produced by such occupation, and two, such occupation, this is where we get into some new stuff. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll, go, I'll skip that for a minute the, the, under the, the existing writing. Such occupation shall not require the alteration of buildings and machinery not customarily used in residential areas. And the rest of it is is language that I've added. Um, uh, such such occupation shall use no more than a thousand square feet of space in any case. Uh, the idea being that a lot of people, what we found is, will start out with something that may very well qualify as a home occupation. And as their business grows, they, they come in and they they do a couple of additions, and suddenly they're you know they're running a pretty pretty good operation in a residential area under a previous home occupation approval. So that was a, a, a limiting factor that, that I chose to, to write in there as a suggestion. Um, also, um, on that part where it says such occupation shall not require the alteration of buildings, I added, or outdoor storage of equipment and machinery not, not customarily used in residential areas. Um, and then such home occupation provisions will also include the following characteristics. and that's where you get into the rest of it and you can read through it but one thing in particular we found that's been a problem and we've got one that we're due to talk about and uh, that we may have pending uh, issues with on an existing zoning violation that we've called out but we've been asked not to return to the property by the attorney that those folks have enlisted uh, under the guise that he's, he's basically stating on the record I think that that they are not running a, a uh, commercial business um, but one of the things in that I don't know if I should mention a specific case I'll just say in general terms <laughs> yeah no <laughs> no use of commercial dumpsters or commercial waste receptacles beyond use in relation to temporary on-site construction or roof repair or in relation to a natural or man-made disaster that has befallen a particular property i.e. a fire earthquake tornado flood severe storm damage etc we're gonna let people pull a dumpster on site to clean up the debris from something like that but um, but in, in, and and if they're replacing days. yeah if they're repairing their roof you know obviously roofers will pull out a bin and can, throw the shingles can, off in it can you put a time on that one uh, well you you could um, well, a roof should be there more than 30 days yeah and the house uh, blows down the debris should be there more than 30 days the, the problem with the debris side may be insurance um, and I, I, could I don't know if anybody from Weems here but Insurance investigations take a long time. Um, same, I agree with you, Tom. Same time, you don't want to leave, come back six months later and it's still there. That's, yes, uh, so. particularly if it's not being used for one of those cleanups, if mm -hmm. it's being used for a business. Um, and, and where that's kind of coming from is if you're in a residential <coughs> area and Saturday morning at six in the morning, the commercial dumpster company comes in and beeps to get back there, and then bang, bang, bang. You know, it's not six o'clock morning. Not, you need to be up. Not anyway. the best way to wake up sometimes or something. But uh, and one thing that we may have to add to that one that I thought about today would be an exception for farmers, because uh, while they're not a separate class of individuals, state law does afford them quite a few. Um, a latitude quite a bit of latitude with regard to local zoning so we may have to put an exception in for farmers but but beyond that um, that's generally where that's coming from no use of connex boxes or semi box trailers or large car car haulers equipment haulers beyond those designed to haul two cars or two pieces of heavy equipment or less for storage of equipment or inventory on site um, 
then that goes into a little bit of detail about that additional semi trailers. What, what, what do you mean by or less heavy equipment or less? Two, two, the, a, a trailer that might hold two pieces of equipment or less, <coughs> not not one that's a car hauler, you know, or a, or something that's going to hire haul. You know, I didn't understand why you said or less, and I'm not picking that you anything. I'm just saying, just mm -hmm. say two car haulers or whatever a car hauler all do. But he said heavy equipment or less, and I didn't know what the or less meant. You don't know, smaller. Um, yeah, designed okay. to haul two cars or pieces of heavy equipment or less. Okay. And um, and then additional semi-trailers and large-scale haulers or equipment haulers beyond the single trailer will not generally be permitted as a part of a home occupation. No security lighting beyond 30 feet in height. No more than one commercially branded vehicle or one vehicle, one heavy vehicle such as a dump truck or semi-trailer, and no more than one piece of heavy equipment that can be carried by a trailer. No outdoor storage of anything beyond parking area, um, the single business related vehicle and business related single piece of equipment associated trailer listed above. Home occupations must generally receive inventory shipment by UPS or Amazon delivery rather than by semi delivery. Any vehicles or equipment related to the claimed home occupation must be stored on site in a driveway or within a rear yard and off public right of way, front yard and side yard. Um, some of this I may have to lean on Mike to see if he thinks that I can say some of the things I'm saying as, as a characteristic. I'm, I'm basically trying to keep the scale manageable in a residential area and I don't know if we can say that they can't receive a delivery by semi but that would. Well I think we got to we got to make a stab at it Tom because as y'all know you and Christopher and Karen we're, we're getting people to come in there and the home delivery thing is, is not as particular and they're doing all kinds of stuff the home uh, occupations and yeah. some of them are just ridiculous and he, here's the one i've got it says the home occupation definition of related restrictions outlined above shall not be used to obstruct the use of equipment on site at any residential property that's being used for the purpose of farming and agricultural activities on the property as defined under tennessee statutory definitions and provisions so long as the same equipment is used only in the pursuit of these farming and agricultural activities and then these are some that have given the board, in my estimation, a little bit of pause about differentiating over the years. Barber and salon services shall generally be viewed as home occupation so long as the facility possesses no more than two client seats and no more than two clients on site at a time. A real estate office may also be considered a home occupation under county zoning so long as the office meets the other criterion of the home occupation definition and the agent lives on site within the primary residences does not employ and does not employ more than one off-site employee who reports to work at the residence. <coughs> firearm sales and firearm repair or smithing operations will generally be viewed as allowable home occupations so long as stated hours of operation are between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. and so long as there are no more than two clients on site at any given time. A lawn care business will be considered a home occupation so long as it does not bring refuse and scrap materials back to the location of the claimed home occupation for burning, composting, or stockpiling when the property is less than 15 acres or when the composting resultant ash is not to be used for agricultural purposes at the site of the home occupation's related residence. All lawn care equipment beyond that allowed otherwise uh, uh, that that allowed that is allowed otherwise items a through g of the definition of home occupation shall be stored indoors um i may have to reword that something i'm missing a word or something but effectively what i'm saying there is that as long as they can meet the criterion of a through g of this amendment um then any other equipment if the law that this lawn care equipment would have to be stored indoors on a regular basis Art, pottery, or photography studios shall be generally viewed as home occupations so long as home occupations above are ascribed to, or, or home occupation provisions ascribed, are ascribed to, and so long as no more than two clients are on site at any given time. The existence of county business licenses shall not ordain a claimed home occupation as a legally operating business within a residential zone district. That's another argument we routinely get from yep. operators. A detached structure may be used in the operation of a home occupation so long as it does not exceed the 25% of ground floor area of all structures on the property and so long as the overall home occupation does not exceed 1,000 square feet in size. How about what I want to do on 
chop on your thing here what I based on yeah this, this has not been to planning yeah I know that at the last planning commission meeting Gene Jones said they would make a re recommendation and get it to you but you had asked to schedule the planning and zoning committee ahead of the planning commission so you're getting first shot at let it. me go over some thing and what I, I don't want I'd really like the committee not to take action tonight but to study it for 30 days and come back because if we do something wrong we'll put some citizen in the box and we don't want to do that but let me go through some stuff that I've been able to got a thousand square feet of space on a thousand square feet it was 10 feet by 100 if I remember correct or 50 by 20. 50 by 20. 50 probably by be 20 more. or 25 by 40. Yeah. yeah. You're, getting into you're, you're probably looking more at 50 by 20 or 25 by 40 type um, structures we might um, see in a residential area. I understand, but that's, that's awfully large to have a it is. business in. I think, I think, I personally think the thousand feet ought to be dumbed down to 600 to 500 or something. That's, that's what the committee to recommend. But that's an awful large place to, you know, you can have a storage building, paint shop, plumbing, supplies. You can have anything you want in that building. A standard two-car garage, though, is is probably 20 by 30. You're talking 20 by 40. 20 by 30, 20 by 40. Well, 24 by 32 garage is a pretty good-sized garage. 732 square feet. Yeah. You're all, you could operate any, too many home businesses out of that. Do what now? Right. Just a, but, no, I'm just I'm, I'm trying to say if somebody bought a house that had a standard two-car two garage car. with maybe an extra storage bay, you're probably... You're probably at 750 feet, anyways, yeah. and and so if somebody came in there and wanted to run a home occupation, I'll just keep that in mind. Um, we and we're getting a more the Karen. Would you like to comment? <laughs> Many of the accessory structures we're getting, regardless of whether they're trying to run an opera uh, operate a business out of it or not, we're getting a lot at least more. A thousand square feet. Yeah, but we're Pardon? getting a lot. If not, 30 by 40, 30 by 50. Yeah. They're getting, they're getting to be pretty large nowadays. I mean, but is that, is that residential? Yes. You're getting that. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're getting people that have bus-style RVs, and when you've got something that size, they need a big structure. But bus-style RV is not a whole business, is it? No, but my, my point is that we're already permitting these accessory structures at these sizes, mm -hmm. and so if, if the first guy builds it for an RV, storage and then he sells it and moves next guy moves in and he wants to start up a home occupation it's going to be hard for us to go back and 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 it, lim grandfather. limit him, him it'd be grandfather yeah. wouldn't no no not no i wouldn't think so either i mean not, not for the business no. um and and so i'm i'm trying to i was trying to land on a number that made some sense uh for a home occupation if somebody did it in a detached garage um, and um, you I mean, can give the you can give the example of the one that went before the board that was on Sims Bluff because those two garages were really large. Um, yeah, I don't remember the size of them, but they this got we got a complaint, and this is closed now, so I think I can talk about it. Can yeah, sure. We got a complaint, and they went to the board of zoning appeals over it um, that a gentleman was running a Mazda repair business. And they had pictures that they sent Karen's office that had like 10 Mazdas out there. Well, I get out there on site and investigate it, and the guy shows me where he, they're all his Mazdas. And they're his. And he's titled, they're his titled and tagged and everything else. Now, he was doing, he did run a Mazda repair business by computer, whereby in one of those large accessory buildings he built, um, he would, he would, he had one worker that came to work and would type in on the computer and somebody in Dearborn, Michigan or something would, would hook their Mazda up in somebody's shop up there a and they would, and they would do a computer Turn diagnostic up. and then a computer tune, tune up, uh, somehow to the, to the Mazda. Uh, and that actually, I'm, I'm, I'm like, that's probably a home occupation. <laughs> I mean, you're talking about a computer desk and he's not doing any repair on site mm -hmm. the other side of that though was he was receiving two or three amazon or ups shipments a day and he had about five racks of mazda based parts, parts, parts that he would put in a in a uh, 
insulate a bag and mail off to these folks that he was doing the auto tune for. And and so I said, nah, I don't think that's a home occupation. That's why I went to the Board of Zone Appeals. And the Board of Zone Appeals, again, to my point about why I kind of want to clarify it, because they had trouble with it. They were, they, the, the, the comment in that particular case was given everything that's happened in our culture, pandemic, the, the gig economy, there's a lot more people trying to do a lot more varying things from home, whether they're working remotely or whether they're just trying to do stuff from home. And, per, and the, the statement was made by one of our members that perhaps our language and our zoning ordinance had not kept up with changes in our culture. And it might be something we need to look at. Thus, I'm looking at it. Well, um, I agree with that totally. That can't yeah, work, but you know, yeah. how we look at it is, is concerned. Totally. Sure. I do think we need to take a little bit of time and instead of voting on this tonight, yeah, look I, I over would, it because just- I don't know, have any problem. My wife, not. sorry, my wife, at one once upon a time had a home salon that yes. she had a business out of and yeah. where i see here it says no more than two client seats yeah well salons typically are going to have a cut chair a wash chair and a dry chair so that puts you beyond i know it's got the two clients yeah but that alone puts you beyond that so yeah. just some small verbiage changing uh you know in that okay let, let, let's study this a bit. so you recommend three chairs or four i don't recommend any chairs i would <laughs> what i would do is i would simply take that out and just have where, no where, more than two clients where, where are you sir that's up at the uh, salon on page three Barber and Salon. So instead of taking no more than two client check seats, the, but just make it two clients. Keep it in mind. We're chopping on this thing. That's what we're doing. But, but yeah, keep in mind, and, and I agree, I understand what you're saying, but keep in mind, I have to have an inspector that goes out there and is able to, to I mean, he's not going to be able to stay stand there all day and count clients. Right. But, with that, so, but he can count seats. But would that put so, this person past that? Because a salon typically yeah, is going to have at yeah. least three chairs. I mean, Maybe two cut seats. I don't know. Two cut seats. I mean, but cut see, or dre dress yeah. uh, or three seats. Or three yeah. seats. Or three seats. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm seats. fine with that. I mean, you go to a salon. What do they have at your salon? Oh, it's big. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to have a cut. They're going to have a wash, and they're going to have, you know. There is another side to this. I don't think we're yeah. thinking about. And, and well, that well, is that it's, it hurts. Some of this start, starts to hurt existing businesses. Exactly. And existing businesses pay full property tax mm -hmm. instead of residential property tax, which is a different right. They're supposed to. They're supposed to. And they but, may have a business license. But the other but thing they, the but, other thing they do, Tom, is they yeah. cut their expenses way down on square foot cost because, you know, and so that's hard for your existing businesses, which mm -hmm. are experiencing a pretty good recession right now, I'd, I'd probably say. Mm -hmm. They're they're squeezing everything they can to make Well, that's it. why they're working out of their house. Oh, I know. Yeah. Well, let, let me add something to that. Uh, Wendell and I have done some analysis, and we have talked to Stephen in the basement about reevaluating folks if they got a two thousand square feet house and have a thousand of it as a business, that that ought to be a commercial tax rate rather than two thousand feet being residential. Mm -hmm. They do it as a business and type. But that's like we're doing right now, chopping and talking. And, and, and this is on the Planning Commission agenda. They've had it for two months, and it is on the Planning Commission agenda. I don't know if they'll defer and look at it. Uh, Y'all can certainly request that they do so if you'd rather them wait until you get back to it. I had, and I want us to go through and kind of, as I say, chop on this thing and just see what everybody's feeling, and then give us 30 days to. Yeah, to I, I'm, not, I'm not under a huge. Um, yeah. Uh, but I'm not under a huge timetable other than to just say that the long, the longer we don't change it, the more sure, sure. the more arguments we're going to have between I, inspectors and, and people out there on the ground and, I, and the more I think we're going to change for the right. We need to study yeah. the right. We're, we're, we're talking uh, we're talking residential. We're talking residential here. Yeah. And the part down there about the tractor trailer box no. having one in the residential. Is that, do we want that? What the 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 Connex box? The Connex box. Tractor I put box. that in there just from the standpoint of, um, and I got we get a lot of we get a lot of complaints about people, um, and uh, many times when people are trying to sell real estate, mm -hmm. um, you end up having an uptick in complaints in an area. 
uh, because they're trying to sell real estate. They're and, trying and, to and use the county as the police of real estate. Yeah, yeah. so, so effectively what will happen is the realtor, benefit. when it doesn't sell in the two-week time period they've allotted for it to sell in, if they're the seller, they, go, they turn around and look at their realtor, and their realtor says, well, you know, if you can get that guy across the street to remove that semi-trailer, it might mm -hmm. help you out. And, uh, and but I can't do that. You, and so you, they, they, we end up getting a complaint. Now, well, you, know. you just mentioned what I'm getting to. Do we need semi-trailers parked in residential, not commercial but residential? Well, it's, it's subdivision. You're, you're in the county. So it's it, what might make sense in Springmont or Shiloh, because it's a dense area, may not make sense at all on the south side of Glable where you got exactly. 10, 15 acre tracks. Right. Uh, and, and I mean, I can, I can tick off several places down in that vicinity all the way down to the speedway that have semi-trailers yeah. parked here and there across the property. Right, right, right. So we'll some old Well, since we go study it the third day, we just keep going. But I, I know a place yeah. where people park them at the end of the street, uh -huh. you know, and yeah. cross the street in the bagel lot. And, and that's like the that. other but thing. Is, is, I, we, try day, to be, so. we try to be reasonable about that in that if, if somebody's a truck driver, they can't much help the vehicle they drive to and from work. So if they bring their, they roll their bobtail into the neighborhood, uh, and sometimes even with the semi attached, the trailer attached, if it's if it's just one, we try to, say, you know, we really can't do anything about that. But if particularly if they can get it off the road and on their property, um, and think about school bus drivers, about the same size, you know, but you got a lot of bus drivers, and we certainly don't want to discourage them. No. Um, so, so. Um, <clears throat> but if, it, if it's one, we try to we try to yeah. say that's that's <coughs> going to be permitted. We're not going to do anything about that. But if, if somebody's parking two and three of them in residential areas, where we get into into problems. I think Tom hit the nail on the head. How things have changed over the last twenty years. Yes, nice years I've been around. It used to be the home occupations with the salons mm -hmm. or somebody doing accounting work out of there, or maybe even mm -hmm. a lawyer practicing law. <coughs> Well, we've had things such as a pet crematory. Mm. You know, is that the right word? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where, the, where they, you know, they want to, you bring your pet, we'll light them up. Fire pit. And, you know, the neighbors don't want that. But it's in a little building back there, it fits the definition. Well, and, and, and there's not much you can do about it. There's one on here that I, I hesitate to even put on there, and that was about the firearm sales. Yeah, we've that's... pretty well resolved that at the Board of Zoning Appeals in talking with Mike and the ATF. It yeah. is a dog chasing its tail to try to get a, a, a consistent answer out of them. So basically, what we've said is a home occupation is a, or a, a gun sales and gunsmithing are home occupations um, uh, until the ATF says otherwise, uh, effectively. Um, but from our perspective, we're treating them as home occupations so long as they don't have an actual retail storefront they're trying to do. And I can only think of one of those that even exists, and it's been there for decades, and that's Wayne Hall. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's not doing very well. Let me ask you this. He goes to church with me. If, if you can do a salon to 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock, why can't you do a gun sales to 5 o'clock? Well, the, the idea... <laughs> The, the reason we put the we yeah, put it from, understand. we're just chopping on this thing. The, well, the, 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 the ATF technically requires a storefront for anybody that is selling guns. It's mm -hmm. not really a storefront. It's it's a place that the ATF can come in mm -hmm. and ask to see your records. Mm -hmm. So our thoughts were if they if they operated between nine and three, the then the kids are in school for the most part, and and that's that's the reasoning for that. And they drug that us into policy. it because they needed an address. Yes. Mm -hmm. And to some extent, you, you'll notice I talked about real estate agents. The Tennessee Association of Realtors is trying to use us to limit people being real estate brokers out of their house. And, so. and, and, and I'm, not, I'm not down with that. If they want to enforce that, they need to enforce it. They don't need to be leaning on us to do it. Expand on the children being in all good. If the children in the residential area of the house. I'm talking about kids way. in the neighborhood. Okay. Yeah. School bus. You know, school bus and stuff. And I mean. And you're over there buying a machine gun. You know, they don't want that. And I'm. 
Yeah. But I mean, if, if you go to everything, I'll be treated like, in my opinion. And, and this is <coughs> this is out of deference to concerns that have been brought forward about mm -hmm. people that were against these things when mm -hmm. we had to take every blooming one of them in front of the Board of Zoning Appeals. Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to get around is we can't really – the ATF effectively told Mike, so if we say no, what are y'all going to do? We're probably going to grant the permit. That's what ATF <laughs> told them. So at that point, why are we even helping? Say no. Mean, what? But they wanted us to act on they, it before they grant the permit, mm -hmm. but if we didn't, we we're going to give it to them anyway. Now what about one of these newer things that we're seeing more and more of in this area, like Airbnbs? Yeah. Uh, How would that stipulate that's, to this? Airbnbs are not they, – they're a separate – they're <coughs> under the definition of bed and breakfast, um, which anything one, yeah. anything under 30 days, okay. um, uh, rented for under 30 days, would be considered a short-term rental or, or bed and breakfast under our definition. Okay. And uh, we that's a use on appeal that's allowed in the residential districts. Um, it's generally, there's also a requirement it has to be approved for a finite period of time, which I think is one year. And, uh, well, it's got to be approved for a finite period of time. The Board of Zoning Appeals in practice has approved it for one year the first time. Mm -hmm. First time they got to come back and reapply. Yep. They might grant them further extension if there's not any problems. Um, the only differential is in the R1 district it requires two, two acres of land. <clears throat> and the caretaker has to live on site or, on site. or within 10 miles. Yeah, within 10 miles. <clears throat> but that's not under home occupation. That would be, I mean... We probably do need to go back and revisit that just to clean up some stuff in it, but it's not. Uh, it's but working. It's yeah, because we're getting people now that are coming back for the second and third go rounds. So mm -hmm. the second they're giving them two or three years, and we've even got one or two coming back now for well, the third. Right time. now, so they all working. fall under the definition of bed and breakfast in my yeah. zoning ordinance. But when you tell somebody there that calls about it. It, what do you mean? It, I'm not running a bed and breakfast. They don't understand it, but I'm like, it's in our definition of bed and breakfast. Yeah. And so I probably just need to change the definition of bed and breakfast to be a term of bed and breakfast slash short term rental slash That's a quick Airbnb. Yeah. 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 The, the bed and breakfast is a time limit on that three day weekend, four day weekend. Mm -hmm. It's just granted for, they, they have to submit to the Board of Zoning Appeals a business plan that tells when they propose things like what you're talking about jerry and also quiet hours yeah. um, house rules things like that for the board to consider whether or not they're going to approve it yeah. and and uh, uh the board if they choose to approve it and it meets the the criterion uh, and they've submitted everything they're required to do they also have to submit uh, emergency contact information to the dispatch emergency dispatch as well as building inspector for the phone calls we get on monday if there was a raging kegger over the weekend or something that made all the neighbors mad uh, yeah um so um you have to have quiet hour, hour so we you have quiet hours things like that and the, the idea of it being a finite period of time approval is if there's a if there's a problem hopefully there's been police reports filed that they can present as evidence the next time they come up and reapply it's working relatively well all night long yeah. yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. I mean, most of the time, I've got a commissioner wanting to make comment. Yeah, oh, if you guys are going to um, amend the Airbnb or the, the Ben Breakfast resolution, um, in addition, we're not talking talk about it tonight, but right, but since in, it came in up. general, <laughs> if, if this is yeah. something you're going to open the door to, Jerry and I have already talked about this. I had one across the street from Lakeview Elementary that came in for approval, um, it was not approved by BOZA, but what came out of that was conversations about the fact that the location of the short-term rental compared to where a school is because you could easily have a sex offender show up there mm -hmm. because again when you're short-term renting there's not anything you're, you're not checking backgrounds and so on as you would be for long-term rental so if you're going to take a look at that resolution I would I would request that you please add something along those lines. I think Jeremy probably knows all the specifics that need to be put in, the, you know, the distances and things. But um, it, it has come up um, within the last year. So, and I have talked to the Sheriff's Department about it as well. So, that was all. You Thank you. Think of all this stuff. Oh, well, well that's yeah. what we do. We try to think of it and figure it out before we go. Long care business over here on the last page. 
I don't care if it's considered a home occupation law, does not bring refuse, scrap metals, back to the location. Scrap materials. Scrap materials, I'm sorry. Uh, back to the location, claim home occupation. And then it looks like that ought to be a period there. For burning. Huh? For burning. Well, for burning or other purposes, or whatever. Stock, it says for burning or stockpiling. Because we've got a few that bring, back to bring piles of root balls and, and limbs and everything back. Um, can't they take it to the dump or somewhere really and bring it back to the residence? I guess there? they could. I think I'm kind of, dump that, that's what that's that's what I'm saying. That's that's yeah. basically what that's saying, Jerry. Is is that we're, exactly. they can run Most of these people that work especially like in the summertime. If if uh, if my son comes home and decides he's gonna uh, not do Something accounting long. and and <laughs> going to cut lawns for a living, um, I'm not necessarily opposed to allowing people to do that you know but they've got it it's got to be limits on it yeah they got to be able to store their equipment on site and that's why there's some limitations about the amount of equipment with lawn care mm -hmm. and then we don't want them bringing like if they're go, doing the full operation they're not just doing lawn mowing but they're also uh Landed. hedging grandma's bushes and everything else uh, and then bringing all that stuff back and piling it up in the backyard that causes a problem whether they're burning it or whether they're just stockpiling it, it costs. There'd a have to be a limit on the and time so, that that would be allowed to stay on property. Well, what I'm saying, if you're going to fall under home occupation, you can't bring it back. You got to take it. Well, the only that should be special. Well, the yeah. problem with that is most of these people work in the summer. The dump's closed at what time? And they work till eight at night. They can't get their stuff dumped off in time. So it would have to be a time period that they'd be allowed to the next day dump it. Good thing is Karen gets off at four, so she can just sit down. <laughs> Isn't that right? <laughs> Karen, you got any thoughts on that? They go to dump in the morning. You can, you can put a dispose of it in 48 hours or something. Yeah, they can go to dump in the morning. Yeah. Huh? They can go to dump in the morning. Right. Yeah, yeah, it would have to stay on the trailer, and then the next day it gets dumped. I mean, yeah. any storage on the land is a no-go. Right. But, you know, a time period in order uh -huh. to, for the, uh, to allow them to go to the dump. I know our, our guys cut our work late in the afternoon in June. I mean, right. like 8.30, quarter to 9. Say that again. I, I said the, the the company that cuts our yard and does our bushes and stuff, uh, went, during the summer will show up sometimes a quarter to 9 because he's got lights and he'll cut and trim at night, you know, during the summer. One thing is code work. Sure, <laughs> sure. But, uh. I mean, he's, you had a comment, he's, sir. he's got that big a business. Uh, the only thing with bringing in the, the leaf litter and the hedge trimming was if they're going to work that way, that's fine. They just have to leave it on the trailer. They can't dump it on the property. Yeah. Good point. Right. No, yeah, no storage on that. Next one. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Has to on the trailer. The the next property, day. Day. And that probably ought to say you got to got to get it off the property in 48 hours or something because yeah. they bring it on Friday, they can't dump it to Monday. Well, then if it stays on the trailer, they're going to have to dump it the next morning any for, yeah. anyway for their work the next day. Right? So, Unless yeah. it's like Friday and they're yeah. not, you know, we'll dump it. So brush, refuse, and scrap materials may be stored overnight on a trailer yeah. Yeah. for up to 48 hours? Not on land. Well, like I said, I'm under no huge schedule, but if y'all want to request that the Planning Commission defer action on it until y'all weigh in, that's fine. Or you can have them do it. You can have them take a shot at it, and it'll come to you anyways. I, I like everybody. Let's take 20, 30 days. Just everybody look at it and try to. If, the, if things evolve, we need to make our regulation kind of fit what's going on out there anyway as best we can without disturbing us people. Well, is this something that we could probably look at between now and the commission meeting, which is on the, what, 20th? That gives us 13 days, almost two weeks. And then we'll have a workshop. Have a workshop Maybe. prior to our meeting on the 20th. <laughs> well, your planning yeah. commission's going to meet on the 17th. So you're probably yeah. bunching too much in there too quick. Yeah. It's too, too it's next five, it? But if you're going yeah, to have a workshop, why wouldn't you bring the planning commission and this committee together at the same time? That's fine with me. I mean, if they'll come. Mm -hmm. We could get CEUs. Yeah. What what thoughts of the committee here? Workshop, no workshop, go study it, come back together and bring out the points. Workshop with us and the planning. Sir? Workshop with us and the planning. That way we iron it all out at one time and yeah. we're not going back and yeah. forth because that's what's going to happen. Tom, wouldn't it be prudent to ask the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals to TMT? Yes. 
you know, being that that's in part part of why I'm doing. I mean, that's this. where it's going. Because, line, because, because that's where they that they're the ones that are having to uh, referee yeah. some of these. Yeah. Um, and uh, now the only comment I've gotten from one of them is, uh, we don't know what Wilson County would look like if we enforced our current zoning ordinance. But I, from from my perspective, we're doing the best we can to enforce it. Uh, you know. There's always in 570 square miles of area. There's always going to be something, and there's certain corridors in Wilson County that you can clean them up, and in three weeks they'd be a mess again. Mm -hmm. can, can you set up with the other two chairs a workshop where we can all get together and discuss these issues? Uh, they I'll, may bring it up this to the table. Yeah, that's fine with me. Mm -hmm. I don't. I mean, can you set that up? Or? Yeah. Okay. Do that. You all have a time frame. Were you already done, Jerry? Any I think we're going to do it after commission, like 28th or something. And <clears throat> so you're, if we made on the 20th, you want to do Mike just said that he didn't think we need to rush into this thing. Well, your planning commission is going to yeah. zone appeals 16th, planning commission 17th, yeah. county commission 20th. That's just so the five days, of which two, two of which are weekend. Got but if we let all this pass, and then did it after I mean, I could do the like yeah. Thursday, November 30th, or first week of December. Twenty eighth, I'm out of pocket. Twenty eighth is a twenty eighth the thirtieth. Twenty eighth is a Tuesday. Yeah, twenty eighth, I'm out of pocket. Can I make, I'm out of pocket. Can I make a suggestion? Yes, sir. I'm out of pocket. You're gonna have seven people here. You potentially have eleven off the planning commission. Mm -hmm. Potentially seven off the board zone to build. Everybody comes in and you open this up to everything <coughs> that's done. You won't accomplish nothing. You <laughs> need to limit it. To, you won't accomplish nothing. You need okay. to limit it to this issue. Your workshop, and then if you want to have another workshop on another issue, but you come in here at six o'clock and you got twenty something people trying to comment, and everybody's got a war story, and at nine o'clock you ain't done that. Right. Well, so that's I, I would limit it to this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I heard, thought that's all we were heard doing. bed and breakfast. I've heard something else, okay. yeah. and you know, take oh, yeah, them one at a time, but we not that, all at the same we'll night. We set that rule on the front end, but yeah, well, everybody has a time. Zoning, zoning enforcement is a whole. That's oh, a whole, I, know. I, I, I would like. That's a whole other that. issue, sir. Yes. We don't need to talk about zoning enforcement if we can help it, but, <laughs> because that's a whole other issue. What I would like to do is have everybody have a copy of that and go paragraph by paragraph. We'll read a paragraph. Anybody in the room got a comment on this paragraph? That's Get right. Paragraph. I'd in like. the meantime, yeah. I can try to. Anybody in the room got a comment? I can try to reread it, and mm -hmm. like I said, I've just ran across a couple of places that it seems like I'm missing a word. Yeah, so that's you small things. Words in there, Tom. Yeah. Huh? You got a lot of words in there. You're good bureaucrat. You know, less is more with us. <laughs> so, so you don't shoot for the thirtieth then? I'm told. Y'all do if y'all need to. I'm totally out of pocket. You say week. the thirtieth? That whole week. November, right? Yes. Okay. Well, so December. You, um, I don't. December fifth is a Tuesday. December seventh is a Thursday. Tuesday. Day that will live in infamy. I'd make another suggestion. Yes, sir. Get past Christmas. Of course you would. <laughs> well, you know, everything's going to be happening. Busy 30 right. days ain't the end of the world. Huh? It ain't. No. It's, it's our first you year. You're not going to be on 30? Right. At yeah. the whole week, I'm teaching a close quarter combat school, so I'm gone. Well, We'll talk about it in January. Yeah, y'all yeah, don't have to have me here, though. January 9th and January 11th. January 15th and January, no, excuse me, January 16th. What's the way to January to put it to January? Or yes, to sir. I would recommend the chairman uh, get with the chairman of the Board of Zoning Fields and Planning Commission, and y'all set a date to yeah. three of you, and the rest of us will we'll figure, figure out so we'll to it. Again. I second that. We'll motion. figure it out when we can. We can be here. We can be here for camp. We can't. Uh, it's hard to stay like that. I'll, I'll, I'll sure come see Tom. If I'm not here, I'll send my suggestions in with Diane. There you go. Okay. How's that? I'll, I'll come see Tom. Well, we'll call them. Here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try to lock in on the date. Uh, I know this has been kind of a workshop. Is there anything else needs to come before the committee open? Do you want to get a motion to ask the Planning Commission not to act on this until we have this workshop? I'd like to have that motion. So moved. Second. We've got a motion to ask that discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. What, anybody else? Old business? New I do business? have a I've got some new business. Okay. Time you go first. I guess it's old business. Uh, what about the lawsuit on the loanings? Uh, lot sizes and so forth. Where are we at, and how does the county stand today if somebody comes into your office? Tom, 
Yeah. Uh, uh, well, let, me, let me finish right in here. Just from, from, from my perspective, I'm I'm the current the change is in is in effect okay. until until a settlement or otherwise dictates something different. It it is in effect. There is no restraining order or anything out there stopping us from acting. Uh, I do think there would be uh, some willingness on the plaintiffs to take a look at alternatives. Let me just put it that way. But there's there's nothing that stops us from enforcing it right now. It's, it's the law and we'll I guess the question is, and I keep laying this in your lap, but <clears throat> did we act inappropriately as far as their lawsuit states? Well, and what I have to do, Tommy, is, is I think I've said before, but if I hadn't even said it now, when y'all take action, it's my responsibility to defend it. Okay. Same way with the Board of Zone Appeals, if they act, if, if they make a decision, my job is to defend it, even though it may not but, be. The but way I will it. say this in your defense: Nobody. you can't consider every possible consequence in a few minutes' time. No, I agree. So, if you think uh, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, oh, but, that's fine. But if we, if you think we acted inappropriately, let's let's remedy it. If we didn't, let's go. To court. I don't know. I don't know that I could say we acted inappropriately. But if you've got plaintiffs who might be interested, you know. If they're interested in taking a look at doing something else, and that tells you they may not feel that like they're on a stronger position. Mm -hmm. So, well, sometimes there has to be some talking back and forth. Well, yeah. I agree, but, but but what their lawsuit states is how how we acted is what what yeah, the, what the lawsuits sure. are, not what we acted on. But but it no, it, it plainly is stems that stems from planning commission consideration mm -hmm. recommendation, and the planning commission did consider. I mean, it's just that simple. Mm -hmm. you, didn't, so, you didn't listen to it. But regardless, that's, that's where we're at. Yeah, yeah. To I'd say, I, I'll, I'll say this to you, simple. more to come. Okay. Commissioner Franklin, we've got some new business, Bobby. Yeah, and and I, I appreciate Tom, you want to change the zoning ordinance and bring it up to date. It, it probably needs it some. And I, I came run across this, and I know everybody's tired of hearing about it, but I would really <laughs> like uh, if the committee would go for this and I guess I can make a motion in a second but I'll just tell you what I had in mind it came to to me that we we allow site plans before we require plans and the problem with this is the state confused tongues of Babel here they confused because it's not just one big county and one planning commission it's several planning commissions and nowadays the planning commission in these growth areas they're in charge of planning and we're in charge of site plans in the county when they're in the growth plan so there can be a lot of confusion between the two if you have a recorded plat in place or a, a, a consideration of a plat then at least you know that all the bodies of the growth area have seen what you're well, let's about. be more specific though Bobby because I, some of the properties in question uh, that may have Arri had us arrive at this discussion mm -hmm. um, already have subdivision plats associated with them that are recorded I think what you're more specifically saying is should we allow site plans and you correct me if, if I'm wrong but should we allow site plans uh, on non-combined tracts of land in other words yeah. we have without a site plan, plan. We, without no, they need so, to be merged first. They, they need so to be planted. They need to be consolidated. Yes, yeah. and planted. Yeah. Merged, yeah. And I'll tell you so, why. Because we were about, the county is about to consider a site plan on a major use in West Wilson County that that there's a road project doing. They're taking the road frontage away from the possibly road frontage taken away from one of the setback. Plans. And we have made the applicant's engineer aware of that and asked him to reach out to the city but you would have never known if we hadn't had that meeting no we wouldn't i wouldn't have you're right and, and so a and that that's a product of, of of not having clear annexation uh maps or policy uh because we didn't know that the right that the right of way in front of old and dirt road we we presumed that that was still county road right away in that portion of the county because the city had only annexed one side now, <coughs> Lebanon's policy is if they annex one side, they're not going to annex the right of way. If they annex in most cases, and if they annex both sides, they annex the right of way with it. What is in the this downside 
No, no, I'm what not. What is the downside from having a plat? I'm, I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing the, the, there's the not point one, at all. But, but the but my but what I am saying is that the annexation map uh, issue is a very real issue. We 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 just didn't have any any documentation to go to to refer to to say, oh, that is Mount Juliet's Road. Well, Tom, we you can know. all blame this on the state. in 1998. Yeah. <laughs> when they gave the growth plans and they did all this and they right. gave the cities the authority to do this. But as long as the cities have authority to plan in their growth area, we better know what they're planning. And the right. only way we can know what they're planning is if there is a recorded document that that person, that group has to see. Now, if you don't want to do it for the rest of the county, I'm, I guess, I, I, mean, I think it's kind of, I see no value in, in, in well, in considering my, site plans yeah. without a plat, but if there is, tell me what I, it is. I have no problem trying to draft an amendment that does what you're asking. I don't because, we, I mean, as I've said in, in the meeting we had the other night or the other day, um, you know, we would prefer that they consolidate them. But in the, in the case of is it is the site plan that's being proposed? Um, well, it's not going to take that. Is there any huge benefit to anybody be beyond the applicant? Probably. May, may I interrupt something here? And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. guys, what y'all talking about is the case that's in litigation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the attorney's going to sit here and watch this meeting tonight. Yeah. And the less said about it, the better. I mean, this is something we can deal with. But we all know that it's well, coming from the and out. Mm -hmm. Mike, I don't think it, it would affect that I don't particular think it affect case. The church. I really don't. Yeah. I don't yeah. think that's it would not my intention. Yeah. It's not uh, my intention we, to affect we, the church. We're talking about the future. We're talking about going yeah. forward. And and part but of my problem. You may be talking about going forward, but you yeah. quoted you started off by saying a major division in, in West Wilson, and we all know what that is. <laughs> so so, we do now, don't we? Yeah. Well, it is an example of the lack of communication yeah. between two planning bodies in this county. If that could mess a, could have messed us up. If you want to use a different property, Van Husco has multiple tracks out there. Thank you, Van Husco, Hoover. Hoover, old Hoover. Uh, they have multiple tracks out there. We approve site plans on each track, but they are not combined tracks. They own them all. But I mean, that's that's their another example of a, place, a large piece of land that has accumulated more land. We just have to find one to combine. Would affect me. Flat. Wouldn't affect. Them. I'm sure. talking about site plans that we consider moving forward. If you're going to spruce up the zoning ordinance, a lot of this stuff's not going to affect all this stuff's already here anyway. But this would moving forward. And I, again, if this doesn't benefit the county in general outside of the jurisdictions of the two uh, regional planning commissions, Lebanon and Mount Juliet, if nothing else, it would make us communicate with them and let them have a shot at seeing what we were going to consider. because. It, it, there's other things. There's utilities. There's easements. There's future utilities and easements. There's a lot of things that can come across a proposed site plan that the planning body in that jurisdiction ought to take a look at before the planning, before our planning commission gets it. Well, just my opinion. I, I don't. I'm, I'm not. You I, I don't feel I'm gonna. No, I, 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 I'm not gonna say one way or the other based on what Mike just yeah, said. I'm watching that. <laughs> Uh, we can talk offline. It, it's a, yeah. I don't have a problem with addressing the issue, but let's be careful how we address it in the context of what's pending right now. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And eff effectively, my opinion is, is it preferable what you're talking about? Yes. In my research of adjoining uh, county planning jurisdictions, as well as some across the state, uh, what I got back was yes, it's preferable. Do we always do it? No. If it's preferable, we ought to look at it very strongly. Is there That's a right. way to amend our zoning ordinance? Kind yeah, of there's always a way to amend. Could you bring it back to us? Huh? Could you bring it back to this committee? Yeah. Do I need to vote on it? I mean, it's just a request. It's just no, that's fine. It's yeah, it'd have yeah. to go through the full yeah. commission. It's got to go through planning, and yeah. if it's an amendment to the zoning ordinance, I don't mind doing that. Just know that. We are limited by yeah. where it might take precedent, where it might take effect. This is about the whole county to me. In the future. Yeah. Well, listen, everybody, we, yes. we've had good discussions. I ask you and invite you and beg that you'll read uh, what Tom has put together, uh, make any notes on it, whatever. I'll come by. You going to be there tomorrow? I should be. Okay. I'll run by in the morning and, and we'll see if we can contact the other two groups. To, Planning Commission, Bozer, 
us and see when we can have a joint workshop and just go point by point by these things, let everybody get input, and then we'll put it back into the voting system what, at that point in time. That's what we scooted in January, right? Well, probably. <laughs> the last suggestion is made at the table here. I think so. The last suggestion made at the table is to contact the, the two other bodies and, and whatever they came up with. And, we came up with it. Just said it. And if you can be there, you can be there. And if you can't, you can't. So, is there a desire no. by this body to wait till January? Because I don't want to push it if y'all are wanting to wait. Speak up, Diane. It didn't matter. I already said do it next week, and y'all said no. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go with it, but that's that's about yeah. it. December is a tight month for everybody. Well, that's, that's true. So we got some. Santa Claus. Got a couple of them. When y'all get together, y'all make the decision and we'll live with it. Every day Saturday for some reason. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> hey, first time I've heard that. Yeah. Well, uh, any other comments, questions? If, if we do it yes, sir. the week after Thanksgiving, possibly. I mean, you're, you're talking late, late November, really early December. Yeah, it, 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 I think it kind of avoid your point about all the Christmas stuff because that usually kicks off maybe the 10th it's whenever it gets busy Black, Black Friday and then it's kind of a dead period and then it picks up again like two weeks prior to Christmas. You don't have a lot of working days between the Monday that you come back after Thanksgiving and the third Monday in December. That's true. 11 that Christmas parade December 3rd. Just it's on a Sunday or Saturday. No, I, it is. I'm just saying. I don't know what that's going to do. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just saying the, the, the well, Christmas I know. festivities are going on. It's going to be Santa Claus and Christmas, right? right? No. <laughs> it's only, it's only two days you're talking about. Right, 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 right. The only two days you're talking about is 28th and 30th. After, 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 yeah. but we'll 28th, I'm out of pocket. 30th, we'll, I can do. Okay. We'll, we'll call them tomorrow to see what we do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other motion? Motion to adjourn. Got a motion to adjourn.